What is up, pickleballers? Today, I have a very special guest, MLP Super Final Champion, Connor Garnett. Connor, good to have you on the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Still uh, feels a little unreal after the weekend was a ton of fun and a lot of energy and just now decompressing. And how does Super Final Champion sound to you? Like, how does that sound, man? Yeah, no, I mean, it's it's interesting because the slice, we, we didn't win any of the regular season finals. So it's uh, definitely an interesting feeling, but I mean, we're super stoked to get it. I mean, first one that ever happened, just especially MLP style stuff is just so exciting and everything has just been awesome with it. So still a little bit on cloud nine with it. That's cool. And for those curious, is it better to win one of the three events or really is it better to win the super final, which you guys were able to do? Super final. Uh, I would say that the super final is just kind of a testament to the team. I mean, there are some teams that switched a lot during the year, so they had less of a chance for it to be like all of the same players in it our ownership group was great and kept all of us so definitely the super final is there's more on the line with it as well so definitely the super final is a pretty cool accomplishment and let's go back to san clemeni so you guys made it to the semifinals. you're playing the bay area breakers what was going through your head before you played them for the first time, and then you obviously played them again in the super final. But before the semifinal, what were you guys kind of thinking there? Yeah, so we needed to get to the semis to get into the super final. So we had already made it into the super final going into that match. So that took a little bit of pressure off us, but they also kicked our butts in group play. So there was definitely, we wanted to get it back a little bit, had some takeaways from group play. And I think in my matches, I felt like each match we played with them in group play, and then even in that match, there were takeaways that I could keep implementing that I saw, and it was just recognizing them sooner and then just executing that. And we started to do that well in the semifinal where we got them. Our women's doubles came in clutch in that to start us off with that. 1-0 lead and then there was a little bit of a chess match with the mixed doubles in that one Pablo and Eva went up against Susanna and I and we picked that lineup so that those were the two two lines we wanted and then in the super final they switched it and split the mix so it was uh there was a, a lot of strategy kind of going on behind the scenes on matchups and who gets to play who so what was like the biggest takeaway after you beat them in the semifinal? I mean, you must've been feeling good, pretty good. And then what were you able to carry over into the super final? Cause the super final, you guys looked like were in control for a lot of it. Yeah, I would say there was definitely a few kind of takeaways in the men's dubs. That was a big difference from the semi to the the super final was just there were a few adjustments that we wanted to make in there and just the other thing is in the final i came in i wasn't as loud as i know i could have been so i just kept telling myself like get dialed make it physical and really just leave it out there on the court and that's kind of what everyone on our team did everyone came cl came up clutch in big moments the dream breaker was a pretty awesome team effort. I think we were down 12, 16, and we were able to rattle off a 21, 17 victory. So out of the last nine, 10 points, we got nine of them. So just getting loud, making it physical and having some fun with the team. And that was a, a huge win that kind of, I would say, shocked a lot of MLP. Look, I think going into the event, a lot of teams had you guys as the number two team right beneath the Breakers, but the Breakers were so strong events one and two. 
I think the Pickleball world still kind of thought that was a little bit of an upset. Were you guys feeling like the underdogs in that semifinal or were you kind of going out there and and feeling like the, the big dogs? Yeah, I mean, it would be crazy for me not to say that on paper we were the underdogs. I always like to preface anything I say with on paper because one of the things as an athlete, you can't be going in thinking that you're not going to win if you right. go in with that, that. It's just a recipe for disaster, whether I'm going in the ring with Mike Tyson or I'm uh, wherever. If I get in the ring, I wouldn't get in the ring. That's the that's the key there. But once I'm in, you got to be having full confidence in yourself that you're the team that's going to go out there and take it. But definitely looking at past results and looking at how dominant their performances were, they were probably favored. We had a close one in Daytona, went to a dream breaker with them there. So we knew we could play with them, but I would say, yeah, definitely. It was the first one in the semi, I think shocked a lot of people. Yeah, definitely. And then you guys are coming off of the big semifinal high and kind of what, I guess, I don't want to say went wrong in the final, but looking back, is there any takeaways that you're like, hey, we wish we would have done this or that better? And then how did you regroup for the Super Final? Yeah, I I think uh, Dallas played really well in the final. They came and take it, took it to us, which was uh, great on them. They stepped up in the big moments. Everyone on their team really played well. I would say just they were getting us on a few things like the shake and bake and so i was aware of what i kind of fell short on in that match and so we had an awesome day of practice and i was able to get out there and ryler me Susanna, emily all just drilled and i really made it an intentional practice to say all right breakers probably saw a little bit of that match saw what went wrong with our side saw what they capitalized on and then tried to make sure that didn't happen in the super final and we were able to gut it out in a in a gritty one and i mean in mlp if it's close anything can happen that's the other thing too so it's just staying there and being clutch in those big moments and then looking to the next season of MLP, we have the draft before that. One of the community questions that came in today was from Mike Sleeves, and he's curious, and I think a lot of us are, where do you anticipate going in the next draft? Yeah, I mean, I would say that it's always a tricky question to answer, but after the last month I had getting two, two Sundays and PPAs, a fourth, sixth, in doubles, getting cardio and I had a nice win against J Dub and Dylan in the back. I would say that I've let the work speak for myself. I think I've put in a premier level effort, but that's got to the GMs and owners have to believe that too. So anything can happen, and I know I've put in all I can do out there. So I'm excited to see and looking forward to an owner taking a chance on me, but. There's so many other factors, it's tough to give a definitive answer. I think you're being a little humble about this, but you have the singles to back up the doubles too, which is which is so huge in MLP when you're talking Dream Breaker. Um, how big of a factor do you think that is when teams are making a decision on a player? Yeah, it's huge. I mean, there's also the clutch factor, I would say as well. And right, it's, it's tough to quantify it because people can change and so based on one event but you look at some teams that were more built for singles that aren't having as much success so you need to draft strong singles players that can step up in the big moments I think and there there's definitely definitely a kind of team component to that too like if you have a supportive team some people who might not have been able to will be able to going forward and so it's it's pretty interesting but yeah definitely i think there was a stat in daytona where over 50 percent of the matches went to dream breakers and if you don't have strong singles players you're gonna you're gonna struggle for sure and i think there's definitely been some cases where there are some really elite doubles players that don't play a lot of singles that 
start to lose it for their teams in some of these matches, which owners, I would imagine, are starting to pick up on. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, I wanted to go on some to, to some more community questions. This one comes from Brandon Lane, but I wanted to first, I, it's a little provocative, so I want to make sure you're 100% okay with this. Nothing too crazy, but I did I did tell Brandon that I would that I would run it by you at least a little bit before asking. But are you ready for it? Fire away. All right. This one says, how many girls did you bring home after the super final victory? <laughs> no, that's a pretty good question. Uh, I would definitely say like after some of those big wins, you start to get a little bit more recognition out there in the pickle, pickle sphere. And so whether it's some of these deep PPA runs and or the super final, definitely getting getting a little more attention and you know whether it's i used to work in investment banking so it's a heck of a lot cooler when you're talking to people to say you're a pro pickleball player you know going out to the bar and saying i work in investment banking isn't as good of a pickup line as a pickleball pro yeah i mean yeah that makes sense i i could see that Another one, Danica Wolf asks, thoughts on MLP draft, which we kind of talked about, but she also followed it up with, who would you want to be teammates with next season? Anyone uh, coming to mind there? Yeah, I mean, that's, I've played a lot of the year with Tardio. I would love to play with him, but also owners probably know that I've played a lot of the year with Tardio. So the, if that was the case, someone might snatch it up. I mean, I think there's a lot of players that I would love to play with in the in the premier side both on the guys and the girls it just i i just want to get there first and i'll make make whatever work that's that's kind of the the thought going into it and i one of the things that i've been trying to do in my game is just get comfortable on that right side i love the left so ideally i'd love to play with someone who wants to play the right but also aware that some of these guys are coming in very dominant on the left so playing the right and just figuring out where i fit into the ecosystem who are you playing with um the next few ppa tournaments i'm playing playing the next ones with a couple different people rob cassidy callan dawson and then once i get kind of those couple i'm gonna lock down the rest of the year with the cardio so i think we both had a few that we committed to with other people and so once those time out then we'll play with each other and then on the women's side i'm stoked to play with etta and irena so definitely some awesome partners and now it's on me to perform which is which is exciting and that's my favorite spot to be in and that's that is a great spot to be in especially etta i mean she's made tremendous strides in her game so we definitely look forward to seeing both of you taking the same side of the court another question here pre-game routine and how are you able to lock in after a mistake yeah so that's always something that i i love to think about and really take pride in adapting i would say that i've had in semi-finals i was 0-4 before i broke through and i've been able to consistently get past semifinals now obviously that's not gonna flat like there's gonna be some ups and downs with that but similar thing happened with finals and it's just my pregame routine i try and be at like fire myself up just to like the max with whatever it may be and not get satisfied like sometimes you have a really good win and you'll see like I remember in Red Rock when I beat Fed and then played Tyson and Tyson thoroughly kicked my butt after I was coming off my first time beating Fed and just like a great match. And so it's a learning process. And so that was one of the things that I try and take note of and just make sure I'm going in really hungry. And then during the match, it's really important to have a good partner that keeps you positive, but also you just have to accept that you're going to make some mistakes and it definitely helps as you get recognized more in the pickleball community because then when you make a mistake you've built up this like thread sure and so it's tougher 
early on, I found, when you have partners that on paper are better than you, because when you make the mistake, not only are you thinking, shoot, like, don't drop me. Like, there's just so much in there where it's like, you gotta, you gotta be dialed. You gotta just look past it. And so, I mean, having a helpful partner and then just focusing on the task at hand. I mean, at the end of the day, you're only on the court for X amount of minutes. So there's no point in getting upset. A lot easier said than done, but if you can just focus on that task at hand and carry the momentum, whether it's slowing it down or speeding it up, depending on how you're doing is super pivotal as well. A few more questions for you. This one is, they kind of mentioned it's unoriginal, but what do you think professional pickleball looks like in five years? Yeah, I mean, the sport has grown tremendously this last six months. I remember looking, my first tournament I played with Sacramento last year and getting to the single, I got to the singles final and just completely ran out of steam, almost passed out on the court. But thinking about the level of fitness, the like level of players, like those same players have put in a ton of work. And so going back to that level of all of us back then, I, I think any, like most of us now would win that tournament handily. So it's just like, the level has gone up a ton. You're starting to see that those players who are putting in a lot of work on the practice court are the ones who are starting to have better results. So it's becoming more and more like a sport. And in five years, it's probably, there's gonna be the juniors that are coming out that have like a nice flick. Like I think some of the tennis players, like I'm working on getting a better flick out of the air. I love off the bounce. So it's not as important, but you see, like, I would look at Hayden's flick. Like, he has a nice textbook, like, clean flick. And so a lot of this, there's going to kind of be clear to find technique, going to be a lot more people involved. And then the hurdle that is going to be tough, and I'm excited, and I think pickleball definitely can do it, but is the viewership going to continue going up? Because adoption and rec play, a ton but do those people care about watching pro pickle and so that's going to be the hurdle and i think there's a lot of great engagement that whether it's the ppa or the mlp mlp is one of the most exciting fan fan engagement events and then the ppa is getting like the hype guys come out to some of that stuff so it's just bringing more fans in making it fun making it a little different than tennis and I think it's only going to continue to grow. More celebrities are going to get involved, and that's pretty exciting. All right, last one for you. Any tips for an aspiring pro? What What is some advice that you can give them? Yeah, I mean, I would say the two things that I've kind of, whether it be like when I was playing tennis or now, the first one is don't accept the level that you are. It's oftentimes, and I think the easiest analysis would be in tennis like you have your like roster spots but you can still have the same thing with your duper rating or whatever it is and so if you're playing like the third string on a college team or whatever it is the moment you start being like, like you know what i'm our third third player you start to play down to that level and so it's the same in pickle whether you're a 4-0 trying to be a 4-5 and you're like i'm just like I'm a 4-0 and then you, you go into the four or five game and you're super nervous, like go out there, take that game. And that's like mentally one of the things. And then just drilling wise, I love just catching games. That's been one of the things in my doubles that I've found is super helpful. Just getting comfortable, moving the dink around, not just going to one spot and the patience, especially if you're coming in from tennis, the catching games are going to be really the difference because as I'm sure a lot of people have seen, uh, I love to speed up and the last couple months I've been working the point a little bit more and I attribute a lot of that to working on pitching games. Right on. All right. Well, I appreciate you hopping on to this podcast and kind of breaking down MLP San Clemente, some tips for everyone and then answering community questions. So great stuff there. Where can people find you if they want to follow your journey in pickleball? 
Yeah, so my main social media is Instagram. It's Con Garnett, uh, C O N G A R N E T T. And then also, I think I'm on Twitter, similar uh, YouTube. It's Connor Garnett Pickleball. And yeah, just uh, you'll start seeing a lot more content kind of getting into that space now as I've had some big wins and uh, trying to help the community grow with some tips as well. Cool. I love it, man. Well, thanks for hopping on and hopefully we can do this again soon. Heck yeah. Thanks for having me, man.